Welcome to section 14.1D. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we are going to go ahead and practice some problems out. And this has to do with if atoms are in the same plane or not. So do me a favor, draw the structure out to this molecule, draw the orbitals, and see what the consequence of drawing those hybrid orbitals and unhybrid orbitals is when trying to determine the shape of the molecule. All right, gentle people, here is the molecule that we have in question. So we're gonna go ahead and write which orbitals are used to form bonds. For each one of my hydrogens, I am going to use an S orbital. Now, for our carbon, we see that our carbon is steric number three. So for steric number three, I'm gonna go ahead and hybridize as sp2 for each of these carbons. If I'm hybridizing as sp2, that means that there's going to be one p orbital that is unhybridized. So let's go ahead and start with this carbon on the left-hand side. I have a carbon, and it's hybridized as sp2. Now remember, these sp2 orbitals are 120 degrees away from each other. Now these sp2 orbitals are all in the same plane. So right now, I'm gonna say red equals in the plane of my board. Now what I can do is draw my hydrogen s orbitals, and you guys will see the overlap there. So these represent the carbon-hydrogen single bonds. Now let's go ahead and draw the other carbon out. So it is also sp2 hybridized, and I'm gonna draw those same hydrogens out. The hydrogens have their s orbitals, which overlap with the sp2 orbit. So this gets us our carbon-hydrogen bonds on the right-hand side. Now what you'll see is that the sp2 orbitals of each carbon are overlapping in the center. This leads to the first bond between carbon and carbon. Now that we've taken care of the sp2 orbitals, let's go ahead and take a look at that unhybridized p orbital. So this p orbital has to be placed on the carbons. Now this p orbital is 90 degrees from every sp2 orbital. That means that this p orbital is going in and out of our page. So here, the green is in and out of the plane. And the same is true for the other carbon. Its p orbital is going in and out of the plane. This is going to overlap with each other. This overlap represents the second bond between carbon and carbon. Now, if you look at this picture, what you will see is that all the hydrogens are in red. They are all in the same plane that I've drawn in. Now, the question becomes, well, can I rotate around such that the hydrogens are outside of this plane? And what you guys should note is that you cannot rotate around the double bond. So this rotation is not allowed. Because that rotation is not allowed, the hydrogens are locked into this plane and they will always be in the same plane. Let's go ahead and take a look at some models to help you see this idea. All right, gentle people, here is the molecule that I have built for you. Now, what I wanna show you guys is I have these single bonds. So here's my hydrogen, here's my carbon. This bond right here represents the overlap between the sp2 orbital and the s orbital. You'll see that I'm 120 degrees away from each other. And if I turn the molecule like this, what you guys will see is the unhybridized p orbital. So here's one unhybridized p orbital. Here's the second. These will overlap with each other. Now I can't twist this because if I twist the molecule around the carbon-carbon bond, well, then I'm not going to overlap this p orbital right here with this p orbital right here. So once I have a double bond, I cannot do a rotation. So because I can't rotate around that double bond, what you guys will see is my hydrogens 
which are these white spheres, they are all in the same plane. And they will always be in that same plane because I cannot twist this molecule. They are locked in place. All right, general people, let's go ahead and try one more. So I want you guys to do the same thing for this molecule. Go ahead and draw out all the hybrid and unhybridized orbitals, see what overlaps, and see what orientations are forced because of these overlaps. All right, general people, here's my structure. Let's go ahead and write which orbitals are gonna be used. So again, the hydrogen is going to be unhybridized, so it's just gonna use its S orbital. The leftmost carbon right here is steric number three, and that's gonna be the same with our rightmost carbon. And so if that's the case, this is going to be sp2 hybridized, which means that they have one p orbital that is unhybridized. Now this carbon in the middle, it's steric number two. So that means it's sp hybridized. This is gonna leave two p orbitals that are unhybridized. So let's go ahead and put this molecule together. So let's go ahead and start with our leftmost carbon. Our leftmost carbon is sp2 hybridized. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my sp2 orbitals 120 degrees away from each other. And remember the sp2 orbitals are in the same plane. So let's go ahead and overlap our hydrogens. So each hydrogen is an S orbital that overlaps with my sp2 orbitals. Next, let's draw our carbon in the middle. It's sp hybridized. And so I have an overlap between the sp2 and sp orbitals. So this is gonna be the first bond between those two carbons. Now, before I draw the third carbon in, let's go ahead and take a look at our p orbitals. So this carbon has a p orbital, and that p orbital is going in and out of the page. So I'm gonna draw this in and out. Now these p orbitals are going to overlap, and that is the second bond between these two carbons. So remember, this p orbital here had to be 90 degrees from the sp2 orbitals on my leftmost carbon. That's why it's in and out of the plane. Now what we have to do is we have to draw the second unhybridized p orbital on that central carbon. This p orbital, remember, is 90 degrees from the first unhybridized p orbital, and 90 degrees from the sp orbitals on that carbon. And so the only way that I can draw this is this p orbital is going to be up and down. Now, if that's the case, this is going to force some things on our last carbon. So our last carbon is sp2 hybridized. So I can draw that first sp2 orbital that overlaps with the sp orbital of our central carbon. So that's the first bond between the last two carbons in this chain. Now, before I draw the other sp2 orbitals, what I'll note is that I have to have the unhybridized p orbital on this rightmost carbon facing up and down. That way, it can overlap with the p orbital that is not being overlapped by our first carbon. So what this means is the p orbital on the rightmost carbon has to be pointed up and down for this overlap to take place. This is going to lead to the second bond between the second and third carbon. Now, if this is the case where the p orbital is going to be up and down, that is going to force the sp2 orbitals to be in and out of the plane. If that's the case, the hydrogens that overlap are going to have to overlap in and out of the plane. So what this means is that there is a twist in this molecule and that the hydrogens will never be in the same plane. Let's go ahead and take a look at the model 
to really emphasize this point. All right, general people, here is the molecule built out for you. What is tricky about this molecule is understanding how the p orbitals are arranged. If we look at our central carbon, what we will note is this is sp hybridized. If it's sp hybridized, then it has two p orbitals that are unhybridized. So the first unhybridized p orbital is going up and down, and it is represented in purple. The other p orbital that is unhybridized is in the white paddles, and it is going in and out of this molecule, so you guys can see it if I turn the molecule around. So what we have to do is we have to overlap p orbitals. Let's say I want to take this carbon right here and have its p orbital overlap with the purple p orbital on my central carbon. Now this p orbital is going in and out. If this p orbital is going in and out, then to overlap, this p orbital has to go in and out. If that's the case, then my sp2 orbitals are going to be pointed up and down. And my hydrogen's s orbitals are going to overlap with those sp2 orbitals that are up and down. And so here is the arrangement of my hydrogen atoms. Now, if that's the case, this p orbital is already overlapping with this carbon. So I can't use this p orbital to overlap with the rightmost carbon. So what I'm gonna have to do is use this p orbital up here to overlap with the carbon on the right. So if that's the case, then this carbon has to have its p orbital pointed up and down so that it can overlap with this white p orbital on the central carbon. So if this p orbital has to be up and down, well, that's going to force my sp2 orbitals to go in and out. If my sp2 orbitals are in and out, the hydrogen has to overlap with those orbitals in that in and out arrangement. Now, what you guys can see is that's going to twist the molecule. The hydrogens are not going to be in the same plane because these p orbitals have to be in this kind of alignment. So remember, when the p orbitals overlap, they are going to form the second bond in the double bond. I cannot rotate around double bonds because then I would start to snap my double bonds. But because the p orbitals on the central carbon are arranged 90 degrees, what you guys will see is that it puts a twist in this molecule. And so the hydrogens will never be in the same plane. All right, gentle people, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1A.